Well, we've got 40 seconds to go until the start of this absolutely classic race. And first off for the multi hulls and the one we're really looking out for here is Concise 10. She's 70 foot, she holds several records, not least of all one around the, the Isle of Wight that she got earlier on this year. And uh, she's going to be looking to set another record, but this time over a much, much bigger distance, 605 nautical miles out to the Fastnet Rock and back. She's chosen to start down by the uh, squadron end, the southern end of this, uh, this start line, and uh, she's starting uh, on Port Tack. Uh, to give herself a good slingshot out with this tide that's running to the west. There goes the gun, there goes Concise 10, coming up towards the line at speed as she heads towards uh, the west. And uh, there's going to be a fast run down towards the western Solent as uh, the multi hulls, the bulk of the multi hulls starting at that uh, southern end of the start line there. The tide's much stronger running down past the Isle of Wight and uh, out into the western Solent. That's why they've chosen to be down at that end to give themselves the best chance of a good slingshot start out on the first leg of this classic race out to the Fastnet Rock and back. The multi-hulls are away. A cappella starting in uh, here, the uh, yellow trimaran, and also uh, France 7, that's uh, Olmix. So we've got three or four here, and Concise now in just lifting the hull there. Yes, Katai's making a very conservative start, starboard approach, tacking into port um, almost as the gun went. Um, so she started behind the group, but as you can see, she's um, charging through now. She'll be she'll be in the lead in no time. A cappella, the little yellow trimmer, making it, making the best start in the fleet. Absolutely fantastic port approach, um, got their timing spot on, and um, is actually still in front of uh, Concise and probably will be for another about a minute. Oh, enjoy it. Charlie Capel there on a cappella. Great start down here at the uh, squadron. We've got Gallarda as well, you were mentioning, Matt, and uh, Concise really flying now. She is absolutely incredible seeing her going out at double the speed of anything else. And frankly, when you look at her windward hull, double the height of anything else. That windward hull looks like it's sort of halfway up the rigs of uh, other boats as she goes absolutely hammering out on port tack, flying both hulls, so sailing on just one of her three hulls as she heads out on port tack at a good sort of uh, 18 knots or so, maybe even 20 knots, I'm not quite sure. But a huge great armada of craft trying to keep up with her. And you can see when you look around just at the, the speeds that the support boats and the chase boats are traveling at, just how fast this multi hull is going. But look at that, what a sight. Yeah, it's that familiar uh, washing machine uh, chop there out in the uh, Solent for the starts of these uh, big races. The Rolex Fastnet race 2017 underway with the uh, multi-hulls going at 11 o'clock. And in, uh, well, about eight minutes' time, we'll have uh, the Amoka 60s in Class 40. But uh, just uh, going down back into the water now, concise 10. That's uh, leading them out of the uh, Solent and many, many chase boats, as you say, Matt. Yeah, I mean, it must be really, I mean, it's spectacular to watch, and uh, but it must be pretty nerve-wracking for uh, Ned Collier-Wakefield and his crew there. You've got a big, fast multi-hull in amongst much smaller boats, constricted waters around the start line, and uh, just getting a clean start will be the most, uh, well, one of the most hair-raising parts of their entire trip, I'm sure, but they'll be very relieved, I'm sure, to have got out of there on port tack at speed, and uh, blasting down the western Solent uh, with uh, clear air and a pretty open, clear water in front of them. So a, uh, a fantastic start for this team. And uh, Ian, for, for the multi-hulls, for the, the huge uh, multi-hull concise 10 there, uh, how close do you think they'll go to the, uh, the new forest shore there? And how much of the, is the tide a concern to a multi-hull when they're flying hulls like that? I mean, uh, the tide is always is a concern, but obviously when you're going upwind at 17 knots, one knot differential in current is, is not, not such a big deal. And they'll probably be looking to uh, extend their legs out a bit and not do too many tacks. Um, so they'll probably, ex you know, keep going until water becomes an issue and make sure they can clearly tack the fleet, uh, cro tack and cross the fleet. So, um, yeah, they'll be trying to minimise their tacks out of the Solent, just trying to stay in, in, the, in roughly in the good current, but not that's not going to be their overriding consideration. The smaller, smaller multi-hulls don't like going upwind very much and, and they'll be playing the current much more. 
Yeah, we can see a cappella there, the yellow trimaran now, of course, behind Concise 10, flying those two hulls again, Matt. Yes, incredible. It's uh, a cappella. Well, we can see a Concise. I was just looking, I uh, just marveling and grinning at the fact that from where we're sitting, looking astern, the windward hull is above, uh, looks to be above the tree line of the horizon. It's just way up in the air. And of course, they've got their rig uh, canted to windward. These are hugely complex boats, these uh, Mod 70s. They can actually lean the mast uh, to the windward side to actually make it more upright, even though the boat has healed. That just increases the power, uh, but it also increases the complexity and makes for a very uh, bizarre-looking <laughs> sight as she goes charging over towards the entrance of the Bewley River, towering above uh, many of the uh, conventional monohull boats that have come out to see the start of this fastnet race. That is the start of the uh, multi-hulls, starting at 11 o'clock. Our uh, next start will be at uh, 11.10 here on 87.7 FM Fastnet Radio.